Hello everybody and welcome back to Tom's Trains and Things. This is At the Workbench Episode 3. Today we're going to talk about uh, adding a few uh, details onto a, uh, some buildings and sidewalks that uh, I knocked off while doing some other work. and I'm going to assemble a kit from Bar Mills Models. Uh, it's a roof access uh, door. There's uh, actually two in there. I'm going to put one on top of a uh, uh, blocker furniture building and I'm going to use another one on top of uh, a building that uh, just to hide uh, the edge of a mirror. So I uh, hope you learned something from today uh, and I'll just keep the videos coming. This kit has two access doors, so I'm going to use one on top of the uh, blocker furniture and uh, remove the uh, little access hatch that I have on there. And a the second one I'm going to put on a building that I have at the back of my layout so I could hide the edge of a mirror. You'd be surprised how much dust you could accumulate on top of buildings without even knowing it. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot on top of this one here. I'm just going to tip it over and uh, dust the rest of this off and uh, get it cleaned off a little bit before I start working on it. First thing I'm going to do is uh, glue a couple of pieces on here that uh, knocked off while I was uh, working on some other things. I got a little man over here in the corner and then I got a, a roof vent up on the top of uh, one of the other ones. So uh, I'll get going with that and uh, then we'll work on a few more things on this project. The first thing I'm going to show you is uh, I took a little tongue depressor uh, you get in, in a package of a hundred and uh, uh, glued some um, sandpaper on it and then I marked on both sides of it you know 100 and 180 and it, uh, you could use it to sand anything you need uh, you could put uh, uh, different grits on uh, on different uh, tongue depressors uh, depending on uh, how uh, coarse or fine that you you want to use for your uh, particular situation right here I'm sanding down the area where uh, I knocked one of the guys off uh, the one guy with the He's tipping his hat in front of the police officer. I'm uh, sanding down the uh, glue that's on there, and uh, once I get that down to uh, down to a, the bare surface, uh, I'll, I'll uh, start sanding the, the guy's feet. I'll just brush a little bit of this off and then uh, sand a little bit more. Uh, there's a little bit more that I have to take off on here. And yeah, that feels nice and smooth now. So uh, I'm finished with the sanding on here and uh, I'm ready to sand the, the guy's feet. So we're going on to the next step now. I have to make sure that Seymour has uh, flat feet so uh, he could uh, stand on the sidewalk again. I'm just going to take a little bit off the glue off of, uh, off of his feet and, and uh, get him ready to, to put back onto the uh, sidewalk. He's lost in asking directions for the police officer. Um, I use, I'm going to use Instacure on this one. It's a quick drying uh, uh, super glue and I'm going to also use the quick set. Uh, to make it just uh, go just a little bit faster so I don't have to uh, hold Seymour in place for a long time. I spray a little bit on the sidewalk and then I'll put some of the uh, uh, super glue on uh, Seymour's soles and uh, we'll just stick them down there and see what happens. I just put a little bit, a little bit of a drop on there and uh, uh, make sure it's not too much so it doesn't go all over the place and then I'll just set him down on the sidewalk for a few seconds and uh, he should be good to go. Uh, I get impatient a little bit, you know, and like to, I don't, don't want to hold him there for too long of a time. So uh, that should be enough and I'll see and there, there he goes. He's doing fine. I use the Instacure on this situation because it uh, dries really fast and it's uh, it's real thin so you can control the amount that you get on there unlike the uh, the, the thicker uh, slow drying uh, glues. Now I'm going to reapply the roof vent on uh, Tom's machine works. Uh, that's another thing that I ended up knocking off when uh, whenever I was working on uh, the uh, stone wall behind there. 
I just have to take a little bit of the uh, the old glue off of the off of there, so you have a nice smooth surface to work with, and so I could put it back up onto the uh, onto the roof. I got to make sure it's nice and smooth and flat, and uh, uh, we'll be ready to go to turn it turn this around and uh, uh, sand some of the the roof up on top of the uh, Tom's machine shop. I'm going to take a little bit of the glue off uh, that was on the roof with the with my sanding uh, stick and uh, do basically the same thing. But the only thing this time, I'm going to put the Instacure on the roof and then spray the uh, roof vent with the uh, Instafix. It doesn't matter on what you spray on what. Uh, it's just a matter of preference. Uh, and you get the same results on it. So uh, there it is. Okay, here's the card for the uh, for the roof. Here's the bracing. They always give you an ample amount of bracing for everything. Put that over here, and it looks like that's the the rafters. Here's the uh, sheet with all the sides. There's two actually actually two kits in here. And this is the trim that goes along the uh, the edge of the roof. And here's the the window uh, acetate. And uh, this is the actual roof. And you color color this, and uh, it has a sticky back to it. And and you put it on there as as uh, for the roof. Okay. Here's the, the doors and windows, and my dog barking and uh, details. They always have a good set of instructions with it. Uh, sometimes they leave the things out, but this, uh, these kits here, they probably have the best instructions of uh, any kit that I've ever had. And uh, they have uh, helpful tips. I usually put this on the, on the uh, smaller kits, the, the starter kits. I got this one here. Um, I, I've done a lot of the other kits, but uh, I, I need the roof access so I'm doing a small kit right now. It's always good to start off with a new blade. And I'll start cutting these out of here. You just cut the little little tabs. Okay, I think I got all the tabs cut out right now, so these should just fall right out of here like this. Okay. The first thing I do is uh I just run the edges along the piece of sandpaper. Uh, for the bracing, the first one I'm going to do is the door. I'm just going to make this a little bit shorter than the eave right here, okay? And normally I would just mark it and and uh, cut it later, but uh, you know, cut it on the chopper. But since these are so small. I mean, they normally give you, on a regular model, they normally give you a 532nd, but I think this is about a 16th of an inch square. So I'll just cut that. I'll make four of those. And it doesn't matter if you do them a little bit longer. I mean, uh, you could always cut them off at the bottom. Okay, it's sometimes it's a good idea just to make them a little bit longer. And we leave these little little tabs right here on there just to just so that the door doesn't break while you're working on it. I use uh, Aileen's uh, quick dry tacky glue. Uh, you could use the regular uh, dry and one quick dry. I don't I can, never seen the difference in it, but uh, that one's supposed to be the quick dry one. I have a scrap of styrene right here, and uh, I just put a little bit of the tacky glue on there put a dab of it I'll just put a little bit of the glue on here and just run it along one of the edges I mean it's going to be on the inside so you don't have to worry about it uh, you know seeing it or anything but uh, you know I just like to just put a little dab of it on there on the front and back pieces uh, I'm going to use this little square here to put the uh, pieces up against there. So you have a nice uh, 
square side and when and that'll go like that so so I'll do the rest of them and uh, we'll see what that looks like so I finished with all the bracing on here and uh, you know you put an extra little piece up here for the for the uh, side with the door and normally I would put the uh, let me wipe this off right here normally I'd, I'd put the corner bracing on the long side walls on here but since this you know this is so delicate with the with the door right here and you need this extra bracing on here to begin with I put the the, the corner bracing on the on the short walls uh, on the walls right here with the uh, windows I put an extra piece in here uh, since I couldn't put a, a long one over here so I put the long one right here and then I put another short one on this side of the window right here so right now uh, we're ready to prime this thing I'm gonna let the glue set overnight and then tomorrow morning I'm gonna prime it on these uh, doors and windows what I'm gonna do is uh, cut these uh, sprues off of here like this on there while I paint it and I'll do the same thing over here I could hold it I hold it with a little tweezers when I'm spraying and then I'll be able to get it like that and then I'll just have to touch up the little dots right there where it's attached see right here I don't know if you can see it yeah there's a little you can see a little bit right there it's sticking up so we'll just scrape it off and what we do if we mess up the the detail a little bit and just take the this is an old blade right here so I just take it and uh, put some more lines in there to give it the the wood grain simulation well it's been about three or maybe even four hours since I uh, put the primer on here what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna do the trim and the windows in vintage white I'm gonna brush it on and uh, I'm gonna do the uh, the uh, wood siding in uh, sage green and what I'll do is I'll, I'll water these down a little bit. I, I uh, keep a little bottle of water in one of these little squeeze bottles. You can get them, you know, in a six pack at, uh, uh, they have them at uh, Joann's and uh, Michael's. I'm going to squeeze a little bit of uh, paint into, into each one of these little things here. And I'll just take my nifty little tool right here that I uh, used on the glue and I'll just mix this up here mix that up a little bit there's a more a selection of colors in this than there is in the spray paint so you know I just put primer on and then I'll, then I'll put the uh, put this on I'll put a little bit of water on my brush and I'll do one of the small pieces first you can adjust how much you could put on there and if you make a mistake, you can just go over with a paper towel and hit it again. I uh, just need a little bit more on that right there, so it wasn't quite enough. On the styrene, we're going to have to put a couple of coats on there because we're using a brush, and and you're going to see some strokes, brush strokes in there. And like I said, we'll, you know, we'll let that dry a little bit and uh, put another coat on it. I'm going to do the same color with the trim. So you want it, you want it to give it appearance of uh, of several colors in there. So you want the little bit of the grays to shine, you know, to show through. I mean this was the greatest invention in the world to make these little combs for the rafter tails so you don't have to put each rafter in there individually and then once I'm uh, once I have these glued up into place I'll have to catch the edges and the edges of them on this and on the uh, on the uh, trim for the underside of the roof Okay, so uh, this is dry. I'm, I'm going to leave it like this. Uh, 
you know you can see some of the gray looking through and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift up a couple of these panels over here and make it look like it's uh, uh, aged and uh, wilted. I'm going to distress the wood a little bit. What I'm going to do is take the, my exacto knife and go underneath this clapboard here and just slice right underneath it very lightly and then go over it again and go a little bit deeper okay and then what you could do is just just lift it up just a little bit and you could even uh, break the wood sometimes I put like little slits in it make it a little bit more than than what you would normally think that they would be uh, lifted up because uh, you know to because you're uh, looking at it on such a small scale that uh, you want to bring it up some so here we go there's the you can see it distressed a little bit with the panels uh, coming up this is the paper uh, that they use for the the tar paper on the roof uh, it's uh, it's got adhesive back to it and they got little guidelines on there so you can line them up and they line up with the uh, you line them up with here I mean you don't have to follow them but that's just a guideline you know so you can keep them keep them straight uh, and what I do is I use uh, graphite uh, on that to simulate the tar paper that's the closest thing to, to the old flow coil uh, grimy black and for this I just take it right out of the right out of the lid shake it up and get you a little bit in the lid and if you need any more you could just add some more so I just go and uh, paint it right across there okay there's what it looks like uh, don't worry you know the, you can see a little bit of the 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 white dots in there from the uh, uh, from the guidelines but uh, I'm I don't worry about that. Once you put it on there, uh, you're not going to see them. And then uh, for the edges and stuff and the underside that, that, that hangs over, um, I just touch it up a little bit with a small brush and use the, use the same uh, paint. Uh, I'm not going to go into uh, painting these little uh, shelves on the side. Uh, usually what I do is, uh, I w when I do details, I uh, do a lot of them at a time at a time so uh, here's one that I already have finished it's on two barrels and uh, 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 a makeshift uh, table with uh, with a hammer a brace uh, it looks like a little paint can and a, a square on it so I'm gonna put that on the, on the on the side these walls I put the corner pieces on I glued them in place and I'm just letting them dry right now and then once they're dry I'll cut along the roof line and then along the floor line okay so so you have a good uh, good cut in there you know it, it's it's easier to cut it a little bit long and then uh, trim it down once it once the glues dries than trying to trying to match the roof line before to get the first piece started I'm gonna glue this in here like this I use the two squares together I can do that with this one because it's so small but I'll glue it together like that just to get it started and then I'll tip it over and then I'll attach the base and then we'll be able to do the rest of them okay I got all the four four of the walls assembled and I got the, the bottom in there I normally uh, squeeze this with a uh, little clamps but these this is so small you know that uh, the clamps won't even fit in there and what I'm doing right now is I, I, I'm just test feeding test fitting the um, rafters in here to make sure that they fit all right and they seem to fit in the little slots okay so I marked on here with a pencil where the uh, where the access is going to go and what I'm going to do is uh, put a little bit of transfer tape on here. This 3M uh, transfer tape is three quarter inch wide and I just pre-cut it so you wouldn't see me here fumbling with it. And I'll just put it right right where it goes. And I'll just put it right there. Okay. And so when I'm ready to, to put the 
a roof axis on there I'll just uh, take the backing off of it and set the access on there and it'll be ready to go before I uh, apply the doors and the windows I'm gonna I'm gonna hit this lightly with some uh, sandpaper just to just to give it a, a weathered look so the paint isn't too fresh on there see so I raised up some of the panels on the side you know just to give it that uh, the old look on it I did a few on the uh, on the uh, front here not too many because I got to put the door on yet and return it for the for the window see I'm working on the roof right now uh, putting the tar paper on uh, off of the little strips here see I cut it cut it a little bit long and uh, what I can do is when I'm finished with it I could fold it over a little bit for the ridge cap uh, you could either paint this over here and use this uh, thin strip right there or like what I did right here I uh, cut a little piece right here I'll lift it up okay and then I'll fold it and then let it sit there sometimes you might have to help it around help it out a little bit you know once it's folded and uh, put a little put a little bit of uh, glue underneath it this is uh, express scale ballast right here I just uh, take the real fine and just rub it over over the roof just to give it a it gives it a little gritty color uh, texture and uh, gives it a little bit of a different color make it look like it's been you know walked on and and weathered I also put a little bit on the on here to to uh, give it a little bit of more weathering in it okay now I'll, I'll peel this up the edge for the transfer tape and uh, apply my little roof excess on there but anyway see it's sticky right there so I'm just gonna set it right down where I had it. and I just let it I'll just push it down in there for a little bit and then we'll be good to go a little bit of weathering in it and looks good to go put the little tools on the workbench little barrels underneath here got some of the tar paper peeling up on there you can see the uh, the distressed door. I put the little door on Tom's machine works. I reattach the uh, blocker furniture sign. Okay, and I weathered the uh, the roofs on here. Okay, and old Seymour. He got knocked off again, so uh, what I ended up doing is I moved him a little bit further away from the uh, from the uh, edge of the sidewalk. So he's uh, in a little bit better position, and hopefully he doesn't get knocked off again because I knocked him off about three or four times already. Okay, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed uh, what you saw and uh, learned something. Uh, continue watching my videos and thanks for watching and I'll see you again. And don't forget to subscribe right here.